There's a role for people who are willing to do thank you parties or thank you notes and everything else in the, in the process. Um, and then we, this is just realizing in the major gifts side that um, it takes a while to get major gifts. And that's part of our concern is that we need to make sure we do things right and just not rush something that can't be uh, rushed. We're going to have to have a lot of contacts with people before we can get a gift. And that we're going to have to have more prospects than, get, than we get gifts. Um, I want to say in particular that in plan, excuse me, in the capital campaigns, we talk about three pockets of money. Most people give to their churches, give to the annual funds out of income. When we get to capital campaigns, people are willing to give assets, stock, IRA transfers, different things like that for special projects. And then the third pocket is through the will and bequests. And that's something eventually Camp Fontenelle needs to begin to do is to, is to encourage some bequests and stuff so that we can begin to build an endowment that will help sustain the, the camp uh, going forward. This is the other thing I like to um, have board members challenged to do is if a donor, and this really happened in Charlotte, a guy came up to somebody we were playing golf and he said, you know, I sold my company last week and I've got to give away a million dollars before the end of this year. This was October. And the board member for a community college said, well, let me tell you what we can do. And the next thing you know, there's like a $3 million, it wound up being like a $3 million scholarship program that came out of a conversation on the golf course because people were ready. The thing we need to do, and especially as we get into this campaign, if somebody said, I just sold my company, what are you going to tell them you need? You're going to tell them about the new, the new retreat center. But we need to have the rationale, not just we need a new building, but I am so excited about what that retreat center is going to do to the life of Camp Fontenay. Too often the church said, well, we'll put it in the bank. <laughs> Wrong answer. Um, I just want to touch on real quick the um, couple of things about bequests. Um, less than half of adults have a valid will. Actually, the statement should be wrote their own will because you have a will whether you wrote it or whether the states you live in wrote it. And the state's will is not very sensitive to a special needs child or due to a set of circumstances. Only 8% of Americans uh, leave a bequest to charity. Um, even though they've given to charities their whole life, they don't think about it. But the ones the the organizations that are um, doing good work with bequests, this is the fastest growing piece of their uh, philanthropy, is uh, planned gifts of some sort. Do you have a sense as to how that would be impacted if the estate tax is removed? Uh, it'll probably be um, impacted, but um, with the way the state tax is now, there's a very small sliver of people who are affected by the state taxes. It's a very, very wealthy. It used to whack people, you know, a million dollars down. You could have to worry about it. You don't really have to worry about it now. But um, I'm sure that'll affect some people, but not everybody's motivation is, is saving taxes. They actually do want to help organizations. So. If they're motivated by the money, it'll probably affect it. If they're motivated by charitable intent, it, it probably won't. Let me, uh, this is an in, in, interesting chart because it um, talks about those two lines, the um, capability or perceived capability of giving and the motivation for giving. 
as we age. And up the left hand side is how much people give. And you can see when they get to 65 or 70, they think I'm retiring, I'm going to be on fixed income, I can't give as much as I give. And so the giving tends to fall down, but their motivation to give continues strong. But what happens is, if they used to give you $1,000, they may give you 200 They still love you, they just don't think they can afford 1000 And what happens is, they fall off your radar. And suddenly you read about they who've been a lifelong supporters uh, decided to give their bequest to somebody else because you didn't pay attention to them at the end of their, uh, of their lives. Now let, let me just, George can skip. I'm going to bring, just talk for a minute about, uh, you'll see the rest of the slides. Um, here's the... Look at that bottom piece, a bold vision by a big God shared by brave leaders produces bodacious bucks in our experience. Um, now, let's talk about your role as a site board and as people who are working on this campaign. The reality of too many boards, you're not passionate about the mission, you think only fundraising is only about asking for money, and we wind up with board meetings, no passion, and lackluster participation. What I want to push is, and our experience has shown, your site committee, the people who are in this room today, want to be involved at Camp Fontenelle, want to see it done, want to use their talents, want to make a difference, and um, enjoy. Here we go back to the joy of, of service and make new contacts. The attitudes about fundraising that most people have are this. I'm nervous about it. It's the F word. Um, it, it's awkward. I don't like asking friends. It seems unseemly. You know, all those things. We don't want to harass people. And so we don't ask. Um, hopefully when we get in this campaign, we'll do it in a different way. And so we get these kind of attitudes. I'll do anything but ask for money. All they ever want me to do is raise money. Fundraising is dirty work. I'm giving my time. Isn't that enough? Isn't that the staff's job? So those are the kind of attitudes we, we see. Um, here's what we need. The fundraising is not about money. It's about changing the world. It's about changing lives. It's about having an impact. That's what I'm talking about, not apologizing about asking to support Camp Fontenelle because Camp Fontenelle is changing lives and making a difference. Um, we, what's needed is donor-centered fundraising. And here, Lynn, look up. Donors experience joy when they see the results of their gifts. I mean, you think about your own charity charitable giving. It's really nice when I know that I've done something that really has made a difference either in my church. I gave $100 so kids could go to, to uh, camp this summer. We like to see that connection. Um, the takeaway for, for boards in our committee is um, don't get stuck in a conversation about money and lose sight of the bigger picture from the donor's perspective, their passion to make a difference um, with their philanthropy. Now, what do donors expect from an organization? Number one is key, to be treated as people and not pocketbooks. To have a thank you, to have meaningful information on results, I give you money, How's the progress on the retreat centers? Just simple things like that. And to know that their gift was used in the manner intended. If they give it for this, spend it for that. Or don't take the gift in the first place. In Charlotte, we had that wonderful case of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, and they raised money for this, and they spent it on that, and then they went to jail. So we need to make sure that if we offer a naming gift or whatever that we follow through with what they want. Now, what do 
what does Camp Fontenelle need from you, from its board? Um, I'm just going to put this in three categories. This is not mine. It's a woman named Case Franco Grace who's done a lot of work in this area. We need you to play one of those three roles. An ambassador to really talk about um, the camp with your friends. Advocates are people who were willing to go to the county board and make a support you when you want to change some zoning or move a sign or do something like that. And then we do need, need some askers as well. People who are willing to ask um, for that uh, support. Now, there's a role for every board member. And we talked about having um, people who can do different things on this board. I want to get to this, uh, though. I love the idea of board members of sneezers. That's kind of a gross thing, but who spread the word wherever they go. Um, friend raising, building social capital, high intention, low pressure. When I talk about advice visits, uh, there's that old fun adage in fundraising, if you ask people for money, they tend to give you advice. If you ask them for advice, you wind up getting money. So we want to, when we start talking about it, friends, you know, hey, I'm on the board of Camp Pond now, and we're starting this campaign and have this. Tell me, if you were in my shoes, what would you do? Give me some advice. Have you worked on a campaign before? What really worked? And that's just a nice way to engage. And the type of thing that, that Trent did with, uh, with George and me yesterday, a tour, just a wonderful tour out here. And our eyes were opened again to the number of, just amazing number of stuff and activities that people can do out here. But again, it's not about the activity, it's about what the activity produces in the child, the confident, uh, confident child. Um, and then finally, um, one final thought. We need to move <laughs> forward. And then one more final thought. <laughs> and then even one more final thought. perspective. Now I'm going to see if I can get this. Uh, you want to, let me see if I can I'm to figure out how to get this projected. You know how to get this from, I've got that video up, how I get it onto the screen. Do you have multiple screens? Is that what you have? Yeah. It's not showing up on the, let me see if I can get it. Now move down Alt-Tab. Oh, okay. Now minimize your... Minimize this. It doesn't seem to be happy with that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> i tell you what, I will send you these two videos that I hope you'll take a look at. Um, and in the meantime, do you have it on your thing that you think... I have the one, yeah. Put it up here and we'll see if we can get that done, at least. I thought I had it so we could, it was embedded. Why don't we take a, why don't we take a break while we're doing this and then come back and George is going to lead us in the last part of the. Is so, you're going to also supply us a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, yeah I'll send you a PowerPoint. I do
that the um, is that today's presentation? Thank you.